Facebook Live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time to take junk, old items, and turn them into things that we decorate with or sell. Lately, our Waste Not Wednesdays have been all about the farmhouse, and today it's about doors. All right, I got to flip the camera around. I forgot to have it the oh, right way sorry so that, that you guys can hear good. There we go. All right. So Jamie's painting this one. These are only 24 inches wide, but it gives us a 48 inch opening to the room. I'll back up so you can see it. So that is the door frame and Jamie's gonna be painting them and I'm gonna be building a door frame because they didn't come with the, uh, the frame on them. Because they're so, new old stock. Yeah, they're, they're essentially Brand new doors that are from a long time ago. I don't know how long, but at least 20, 30 years. <laughs> yeah, and new old stock is great because it's in good condition, but you get a good deal. Um, it says for solid wood doors, you probably pay what, like $150 a door? I don't know. Yeah. I paid 60 so, Well, solid wood doors for this size, because these are actually probably intended for like single door closet or pantry or something like that. But we're going to double them up and make them French doors to the well, master bedroom. And the design is indicative of the way that older doors were made with the panels and whatnot, which is why we picked them. Oh! Okay, so Jamie's cleaning. Yeah, yeah careful. Just, they've been drugged a lot, so they have some splinters. I'm sorry, I'm walking on plastic. So if you hear crinkling, that's what that is. Yeah, we got plastic down over the wood floors. They're up on the sawhorse. And we're painting them in little black dress. All the doors are going little black dress in DIY. Yep, the exterior door I did with exterior paint, but these doors will be little black dress and then eventually I will seal them with black wax. And the reason for that is because when things are sealed with wax, it's really easy to touch them up. You can like lightly sand it and rebuff with the black wax and freshen it up. I gotta get this paper. It's been on there for a long time. All right. So if you want to pull up comments real quick while I do this. Yeah, where are the comments? They're on my They're, comments. Everybody's saying hi to get to each other. We got this fun, the fun community of people that probably just, uh, you know, we've created a place for them to hang out and they're here more to chat with each other than to watch the video. Which is alright. <laughs> it's totally fine. Alright. I thought so that that would feel off a lot easier than it did. Where is your YouTube at? That uh, is the question. I found my phone. I found it. <laughs> All right, bringing up comments here. Jane, yes, I've caught on to you. <laughs> it's funny, you, you think sticker's gonna peel right off? I've had to sand off more stickers. It's kind of ironic. There's like this sticker they put on things from California. And it says sawdust may cause cancer or whatever from sanding this, but you literally have to sand it to get the sticker off. And if they didn't have the sticker on there, I could just paint it. Okay, so I'm going to leave you guys watching Jamie get this going for just a sec. And I'm, I've got a couple cuts to make. So what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna get the full width of this and then measure how much I need for the doors and the height. And then I will go ahead and cut these boards down. This is just uh, one inch common board pine. So I ripped them down to be as wide as my door jam, which is four and a half inches with the trim on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it out of these. And that way we can put hinges on and hopefully it'll open good. We'll find out. Let's see if my math is right. We might go through a few common boards. It usually takes two coats with unfinished wood. I do one coat, let it dry completely. Then I buff it and then I do a second coat. It's like a piece of drywall, something other than my door. Coverage wise, one coat definitely works on raw wood, but I feel like if you do two coats, then you get better coverage and it really keeps them protected. All right, that is right at 80. You're about to get your, your uh, <laughs> what is that called? Measuring tape painted, sorry. 
Not running on a lot of sleep here. So 23 and 3 quarters by 80. Make sure the other door is the same. You never just want to hope that they're the same. Yeah, we have friends of ours. I don't know where they get them from, but we get most of our doors from them. Um, and we got our French doors that are on the back of the house off the family room from them as well. They get new old stock, antique doors. I mean, some of the doors are from my collection that I've just collected, but I did not have enough doors for a whole house. Mike and Aubrey Forbush. You think you get all the dust off and then... As a little black dress is painted right off. It won't even care. <laughs> it adds texture. Okay, Anyways. so if my math is right, 23 and 3 quarters is 47 and a half, and then I'm going to leave a half an inch gap so that it can swing good and compensate for each side of the hinge. Just try, uh, maybe I'll go quarter inch so it's not got a huge gap in between the doors. Well, a worst case scenario, we bust out the belt sander. That's true. Bell sander is magical for shaping doors up to fit in door jams. We have done that. <laughs> I'm using my two inch angled zebra brush, which has been kind of my go to for trim and stuff here at the farmhouse. It works really good, cleans up well. You can get a nice crisp line. All right, I'm going to cut this. I'll be right back. Okay. Are you going in the garage? No, just to the miner saw. So. Okay. We can't really cut super close to our master bedroom because we refinished the tub for the kids' bathroom. If you guys didn't watch that, we went live last night. We were like, oh, let's refinish this tub. And the, Zeb and I both decided to go live on YouTube to show you guys what we were doing. So when we're done here, we'll show you what the tub looks like this morning. It's still not completely cured. It's a little bit tacky, but it's getting there. It takes about 24 hours to dry completely. Ugh. So a lot of people have asked me about black doors, like why black doors. Um, we're trying to do a very like classic monochromatic theme in the farmhouse, but also um, we have so many different styles of doors. Some of them do have cool chippy paint, but it would be kind of chaotic. And so taking different doors, but painting them all the same color provides some continuity. And it just makes it a little bit more uniform. Like, I don't want perfection. I want this old part of the house to mimic, or the new part to mimic the old part of the house. But a little bit of uh, continuity goes a long way for design. I think I already messed my cut up. Oh, well. I had to, uh, I have to compensate for the actual frame on the other side. So I'm gonna have to cut another board. <laughs> That's all right. Zeb did not want to do this live. <laughs> Cause it's like, it's These pristine. French doors are hard enough as it is. And then to do it on a live video, it's like, uh, <laughs> I, I upholstered live with half numb hands, so I feel like you can do this. You can do it, Dub! <laughs> so, 47 and 3 quarters plus an inch and a half. That's 48 and 3 quarters, 40. 49 and a quarter. No, 47 and 3 quarters plus an inch and a half? Mm hmm. 49 and a quarter. Yes. I thought you said, never mind. I thought you that's, said that's how wide I need it to be. I think my other off-cut board might be that wide. We have used so much latex on the walls, and I'm so used to DIY paint. I hate latex. On this shiplap, like, if you get any drips, you literally cannot sand it. It just, the latex just peels off. So we used a razor blade when we had drips, like a big fat window one, and scraped it off the shiplap in the bathroom because it looked, it looked awful, and it was just peeling up. So it's nice to get to use some DIY on things because I hate latex. Oh, Heidi Christensen, channel member. Hey, Heidi. I'll pull up comments here in a minute. I'm just going to get this painted. The nice thing also about DIYs is it's all natural, no VOC, soap and water cleanup. We, do, we are using latex on the walls, so it gets kind of stinky. So it's nice to have something that doesn't require a respirator or open windows since it's winter time. This brush is getting down in all the cracks. The only thing about like old stuff, is there's lots of detail. I was thinking the other day, if we had just went like more new construction with the addition, we would have already been done. Like drop in a shower pan instead of tiling and fiberglass showers. That stuff goes together quick, like mass-produced construction houses. 
I'm a little bit jealous of their bathroom installation. Much easier to just have her pre down and throw it in. It doesn't take any time at all. The showers, having them tiled, there's like so many steps to waterproofing it and getting it just right. All right, I'm gonna finish this panel and then I'm gonna pull up comments while Deb's cutting. You kind of have to stop at a, like, the right point, otherwise you get weird brush strokes. Would you mind looking at comments before you? Yeah. <laughs> bite? Sorry. I'm... I've been neglecting the people. Let's see, I'll scroll back real quick. Crescent Moon Cottage is making chewy toffee, which sounds delicious. Last night we had milkshakes. And now everybody's talking about food and Welsh cookies. Mmm. Last year, didn't somebody send us some butter cookies from the UK? Was it Christmas time? I don't remember, but I just remember they were delicious. Yeah, Donna says not to worry about them. They're having fun talking about baking. They're talking about baking. Yeah. Well, I have to talk because when people watch the replay, they don't always watch the live chat. So they're like, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'll be right back. I got one more cut and then okay. no, two more cuts. And then I'll be nailing it together, hopefully. All right. Deb assembles his uh, door jams on the floor and then he pokes them into where they got to go. The trick with painting to getting it smooth is putting it on there and then smoothing out your brush strokes. My dad says I have a very interesting way of painting. He's like, you just swap the paint on there and then smooth it out. And like, and it looks good. I'm like, well, you have to work fast because if that paint dries and it starts to pull up. My dad was a contractor for many, many years, so he has very specific, methodic ways he does stuff. So sometimes it takes him seeing how I do it to be like, okay, yeah, you can do it differently. You don't have to do it the way I learned. Also, when you're painting with DIY paint, you can come back and sand it and smooth it out. Whereas like latex, you're kind of out of luck, so he's not used to using this kind of paint. It's luxurious. It is nice. It does, like it feels all creamy when you brush it. And then you use latex and you're like, what is it? We sprayed the plastic? walls with latex and I immediately hated it. It's <laughs> grippy and it doesn't feel as creamy smooth when it goes through your brush. I used to paint furniture with latex. I feel like I need to, I feel sorry for everybody. I'm like, I'm sorry I painted your furniture with latex now that you're having to strip it and it's like peeling off. All right, so the uprights need to be 80 and a quarter. I'm gonna make those cuts real fast and then we'll show you nailing some stuff together. Donna says I hate painting doors, so boring. I actually love painting doors because I'm kind of obsessed with doors. I love the shapes. I love to see the way they were made, especially older doors or hardwood doors. Like, there's nothing exciting about a hollow core door from the road. But a nice, good, solid wood door, it's just something great about it. Especially the super old ones. We have some that are turn of the century, actually even older than the old part of this house. And they're hand carved and put together with square nails. And um, like the way that they constructed them was just gorgeous. I guess that makes me a carpentry nerd. I don't know. I love millwork. I don't necessarily love installing it. It takes forever. I've just started doing the baseboards. Baseboards actually aren't too bad. It's the door casing and the window casing that takes a hot minute. And I can't do all the walls because that has to frame out the doors. And then you can do the floorboards up to the door. I'll probably wind up casing the windows myself, but I need a refresher for it. I did get like three of the windows in the old part of the house and I thought that the new part would be easier but we had the roof off too long and it rained. It rained and, like three times really hard. And so we have a lot of crooked like if we would have been drywalling we would have had to really belt sand these walls to straighten them up. Shiplock kind of allowed for me to go with all the bows. The only thing is now we have crooked walls a little bit so we have to compensate with the trim. But we like to say crooked is character. It is character. It is character. It makes the old part look like the new part. All right, I'm going to bring you guys in here. If you missed last night's video, go check it out. We had a good time. 
And uh, we also did this tub. And we ended up taking the tape out of the bottom and a bunch drained out, but we got nice, even, smooth. Like that looks like a brand new tub, except for this is what I was talking about. You can still see where it had chipped, but if that bothers you, you can sand that down smooth. We just wanted to cover it because we think that adds character. Yeah, the, the chippy part rusts. Okay, so we've got you in, we're in the master bedroom. It's slowly becoming more clean. Um, let me scoot you back here. I haven't tried to clean that room. So I've got a 15 gauge nailer that I'm gonna be using. And I used to screw these together, but once you, once you shim the wall and screw them to the wall, that part doesn't really move, and I noticed that like all the door jams are nailed together, so I've been gluing them and nailing them together, and it's much easier, and you get less split out with the wood. So that's that's the route I'm going. Well, and you got a fancy new nail I did. This is a 15 gauge nailer. It shoots a much larger nail, and they're, I'm running two and a half inch nails. So they, they drive it's down nice and deep. It's smaller than the framing down, uh -oh. but better than my little nail. We didn't get the cat back on this and it was plugged oh, sorry, up. Sorry, that was me. It's okay, I, I got it. Where the cap is. I think the cap is actually at the shop without the glue. <laughs> okay. So if my math is right, just butt these edges up. Let's see, turn the nailer on. It's got two power modes. We want all the power. Drive these nails in nice and deep. And I get my hand out of the way because inevitably, if I don't, a nail will go crooked or it'll hit a knot and go right into your hand. Every, every time I forget to move my hand, I, I shoot a nail and it happens like twice a year. I've nailed my hand twice since I started the chip lab. Okay, so that will hold that together pretty well. Because um, what's going to hold the door up is when I screw the hinges to this vertical part. And this is... Mostly just to keep my spacing correct. Alright, now this side. Uh, only 42 more doors. <laughs> but that's also part of why I'm nailing them because it's so much faster than, than doing the uh, countersink with the screws. And with the glue, the glue does most of the work once it's dry. The nails just hold it together until the glue dries. Glue is actually a better bond than nails, always. Okay. All right, let's see if we can stand that up. And see how it fits in the door jam. Your shiplap's too low. Let's see if we can fit it in there. Oh, you might have to I have, So Jamie's shiplap hung oh, over, yeah. and she just ran it. Come in from this side. So oh, so out. it's not quite square. Okay, I'll just have to trim it a little bit, because that'll be covered by trim. And then we'll, we'll fit that in. Yeah, there's a few spots where you're either going to have to dig it out or add to my shiplap. Okay, where's the jigsaw is the question the of the day. Jigsaw. Oh, I bet you it's in the other room it's where we were cutting stuff out. Room. Did you use it when you were doing the rock wall? Okay, so let me show you what I'm up against. Jamie, when she did this, she just ran the shiplap straight across, and it's just hanging down under my door jam by about a quarter of an inch, and I gotta, I gotta get rid of that. It's, sometimes it's easier to come back and jig it than it is to try to get it perfect. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter if that's super super clean cut because the trim will cover all of that. It's part of, like a real carpenter would have cut it ahead of time, but I'm not a real carpenter, so I just do what I can do. Part of my done is better than perfect situation because I know that it's going to get trimmed out. Uh-oh. What? Jigsaw's not in there where I used it last. Well, I didn't use it. Is it downstairs? I don't think so. Did you use it this morning at all? Um, no, but it's over here. 
I think sometimes I just get tools in my hand and they get set down randomly. Yeah, but sometimes I'll be like, why have I been carrying around this saw for 20 minutes and not left it where... What happens with a nail gun? Okay. Thank goodness for trim and cult. Not the easiest to cut with a jigsaw over your head, but done. Now I gotta cut this That's lip nice here. Level. strokes because it's raw wood. I'll show you the door in a sec. Hopefully I don't get sawdust on your door. Stand right there and don't let any chips get in your door. Okay. <laughs> I sawed slow. Did that help? That's a black door there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is all framed in now. Do you need to be in there? Okay, hold on just a second. We're going to turn the camera this Mark's way. Mark's going to sneak by. Hold on. <laughs> look, at the, look out the window. All right, now we do. Coming. We do have some gorgeous views out the window here. See the mountains? Let's see if we can get you close. Oh, side of the window. Not everybody wants to be on the camera. That's our view out our master bedroom. It's awesome. Not that you would be able to... Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't know. He's he's inconspicuous. Okay, look. Check out that door now. And actually, it's okay if it gets a little dusty because I'm gonna have to do a finish sand, another coat of paint, and then wax. So it's fine. It's fine. That's and that's the other thing I love about black wax. Like if you get any dust in there when you wax it, it makes all the dust black and it's good. And then you buff it smooth and it's so delicious. Can you say doors are delicious? I don't know. Jane, Mark is not scary. He's really nice. Yeah. We actually, <laughs> I feel like the best thing about this house is our neighbors. On both sides, we have great neighbors. And we happen to score because there's not a lot of kids on the street. The only kids are like the house next to us and the house next to them. So, that's handy. Yeah, they came by looking for Redrick yesterday. They're like, is Redrick home? I'm like, not quite yet. He's yeah, not he's quite not, home. He doesn't quite live here yet. <laughs> yeah, because the boys' two houses over, um, some of them, their family members are on Redrick's football team and his wrestling team. So that's fun. We got to get the wrestling mat for the playroom because I have a feeling there's going to be some wrestling matches happening in there. But we can show you guys the rock wall that we set up. We don't have the... Uh, cleats on it yet, but we do have the one inch or three quarter inch plywood up for that. <laughs> All right, we are going to let this dry for a little bit before I bother moving it. Okay. Mark said he doesn't care if he's on camera, so if he walks on by, say hi. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Eventually, maybe someday y'all will meet Mark and Maylene. All right. Now it fits. Look at uh, that. Now the question is, grab that other door. Yes. Well, you painted that one, so we can't. You can't touch the one I painted, but you can have that one. Let's see if it fits underneath, or if I'm going to have to trim off the bottom of the door. We'll see. Do you want me to, we, it's probably still wacky. We, we, use the, we use the benches as workbenches. Last night. Oh, that's it. 
some shims and some leveling and this door will just barely slide in there which is good I don't want it to be loose this is going into the master bedroom and we want to we want to block as much sound out as we can so I can sleep in right because that's a thing that I do I sleep in <laughs> okay whoa the nails held together <laughs> I'm glad I wasn't over there. Also glad you didn't hit my tub. Yeah, I didn't hit the tub. Only on live videos. Okay. Jamie's Jamie's telling Mark where she wants the uh, benches in the shower to go. He's he's doing the tiling in there. Conversating. Conversating. So we had this talk earlier about these doors and I couldn't decide because once you look at it, you're like, oh, is that right? But we decided that the bottom, the thick part here, because we're like, does the small panel go up or does the small panel go down? And the way we determined it was the thick panel on the bottom here goes on the downside and the thinner panel up top goes high. So that's the way we're going to work it. Now these have, I'm not sure if you know what these are for. I'm, is it for like a swinging door or I don't know. I don't know what this dowel hole is for. Both doors have it on top and bottom. I'm assuming it's so that you can just put like one of those hinge swinging door deals in there. Oh, you can't even see what I'm talking about. These holes. Um, but I'm assuming it's so that they can be on like a swinging hinge. It just goes down in here and into the floor, but I think we're just going to do traditional hinges because it's also pre-cut for that. We got hinges right here already pre-cut, which is awesome. And because that's that's one of the hardest things is getting these cut out right into the right depth. I bought new hinges. Did you do happen to know where they went? No, but I'm going to go see if I can find one real quick and put them... Well, I'll wait until you finish painting that door. Do we want to carefully move that door so you can, you can paint, paint this one? one door and I can paint it while it's up. Oh. If you want me to. Is that easier? I need both doors to be oh. dry so I can make sure that they're okay, like... I'll get the heat gun on They this. fit together next to each other. All right, where is the heat gun? The painted huckleberry. Yes, they are for the swinging hinge. Sweet. I thought that's what they were for, but I'm, we're, we're not going to use them, oh, but it would be convenient to have that option if you were like I, putting these in a pantry or something. I bet you they're under the, um, the end of the bench. Island? Oh, under the bench. I put all the stuff that we bought from Home Depot there. Okay. I'll be right back again. All right. You're going to heat gun this door yeah, so that we can the, flip you it? You can poke the camera this way. They can watch paint dry. It'll be super exciting. Paint drying. Brought to you by Jamie Ray Vintage. You're only going to see paint dry. The holes on the top are for bifold doors for like a closet. Yeah, probably. It's like watching bread toast. It is. I feel like toast takes a million times longer when you're standing there waiting for it to brown. So with us, the small is not going to be on the bottom because this big fat part here needs to be on the bottom. I know it's weird, but a lot of older doors were made that way, which is probably why this was. Caitlin, USPS likes to say things are delivered and then they show up a few days later. It does happen. So when stuff gets delivered from the post office, they have this little scanner gun and if they click the wrong button, it'll say things are delivered or whatever. And it's literally like, you know, think about when you're on your phone and you accidentally hit the wrong button. 
That happens all the time with packages. Yeah, this is a kick plate section. Like back in the day, they would have put like a, a metal kick plate on there. But the, it doesn't really matter when you have doors like this. It doesn't really matter the panels. The thick part is the bottom of the door. It, trust me, it would look really awkward to have a big fat part on top. They're thick bottom doors. <laughs> I just paint a lot of doors upright. I don't really. Yeah, don't we'll care. put the plastic ones. So this other door, this is here because I didn't have it mounted yet. But we'll show you the bathroom door in just a sec and that, should it, paint it in place. Is it possible to put? You got is that on high? Yes. Oops. Is it possible to put this black part out? Because we still have to paint. Oh, we have to paint ceilings. Yeah. Let's we... <coughs> not paint the door anymore. No more painting the door. Yeah, because. We got a big ceiling, which is fine because I got to put a second coat on here anyways, but I forgot. So the We're spraying the ceiling. We're not brushing them. Still need trim around them. And the beadboard does show up quite a bit better. Like uh, it looks it looks more like beadboard once they're painted instead of just plywood. things are always so hard to open up like they're they're vacuum sealed and all that I can never get them open good I end up just like do your packages when you have to open stuff like this just look mangled it's kind of like when you get a toy for Christmas and your kids want you to open it like right then and you've got to break open the plastic and then they've got 400 twisty ties and metal holding it and I'm like holy Batman just put the toy in a box so I can get it out but they want it to be it's displayed like pretty. Theft. Well, I think it's so that way it doesn't shift in transit. See, as a kid, I always thought it was so people wouldn't steal it out of the box. <laughs> like, they make it difficult to get out of the box. Okay, so this is set up for four inch hinges and we have three and a half inch hinges so I'm going to if I can get this open I'm just going to put it on the bottom of where the hinge was cut out for that way it's the same every time and I don't have to be like oh is it in the middle is it over here there we go and the nice thing too about DIY paint, like if you get dust or crap in it, it sit, literally buffs out so easy. I hate, like I, I think I've talked about it like 8,000 times, but I can't stand peeling paint. It makes me angry. So when I, when I, this is getting a lot lighter because it's clay based paint, but when I finally go to waxing the doors, they're going to get a lot darker. So that is one of my tricks when you're painting black. Use black wax if you're going to be using wax instead of clear wax, and it will make your black so much richer, so much deeper. And you don't have to worry about getting flecks of anything in it because the, the wax is black. Or you can also use black oil wax. It works really good, too. Especially if you want something that dries really, really hard, you can use black oil wax, and that's a good option. Oil wax is a little bit drippy and messy, so since I'm going to be doing a lot of these doors in place, I'm probably just going to use black DIY wax or black wax and sweet pickings. Butt's going to get hot. It's too late. You are, your butt's already hot? Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Warm tush. I don't know why, I always put the middle screw on the hinges in first and then the rest of them. Having solid wood doors also helps a lot with noise control. People were really worried about us insulating and making everything. And we can't hear each other even without doors on right now. Yeah. But we did insulate our bedroom wall all the way across and all the bathrooms. And I asked my dad, I said, Dad, when you build houses, 
what did you insulate? He's like, I didn't even insulate the masters. We only insulated bathrooms. So that if you have like a track home, if you didn't pay for upgraded insulation, I guarantee you the only walls with insulation are the bathrooms. And that's not even required by code, so you might not even have that. Yeah. So you can see this door is getting nice and flat. Meaning the sheen on it. You can see where it's wet, where the paint's drying out. It kind of gives you the final color and look. And with the wax, we'll have somewhere in between. It'll be more of a flat look with the wax, which is awesome. Well, if you use a buffer that you, like, that you can put on a grill, you can get it pretty shiny. We actually have some, but I don't know if they're sold out yet. I talked to, so it was the Buffs a lot, Buffy Buffs a lot. Um, and I talked to the wholesaler and they're actually having to find a new manufacturer. So if we're sold out, we will get more soon, but um, it's gonna be a little bit before we get more in. The joy of manufacturing. Well, everybody's feeling it right now. We can't even hardly find shiplap. Like we've bought all of the uh, hardware stores out that are close to us within half an hour and they, they're not getting more in. <laughs> yeah, so if, if anybody's been doing a shiplap project and can't find shiplap, it's probably my fault because they don't really carry enough ever for somebody to do an entire house. And I probably literally, what, three or 4,000 pieces? Yeah. Of ship left. We're on like our fourth pallet, I think. Yeah, plus the old part of the house, so I'd probably put in somewhere around 4,000 pieces of ship lab. And a store might have two or 300, 500 if you're lucky. If I knew exactly how many I would have needed, I could have special ordered it in, but I have no idea. I've never done this before. I am significantly faster at putting it in. A room used to take me a whole day, and I can do a room in a few hours now. I keep thinking I have it dry and then I see spots. Okay, hinges on that door. Alright, you need this door to be dry? I'm hurrying. Yeah, you it's okay. You can't leave it somewhere too long because then it bubbles, so you kind of got to come back. Alright, so hinges on the door. Let me see if I can stand this. I might just put a couple 18 gauge nails in there. So this is the 18 gauge nailer, smaller nail, important to note. I'm gonna use these because if I gotta pull these out, they'll, they'll pop right out pretty easy. They're for trim and, and uh, smaller applications. But it'll hold the frame in there and keep it from tipping over on me like it did a minute ago. So pro tip, if you guys are doing shiplap, you want to use at least an inch and a half nail. If you ever see somebody's shiplap like popping out, it's because they A, did not staple it in or nail it into the stud, which people do all the time. It's not going to stay if it's not in a stud. And B, they used too short of a nail. So make sure that you're always ending on a stud when you cut your boards and make sure you're using a long enough nail when you're installing shiplap. Nobody wants their walls to come down. Or bow. It, it looks really bad, especially a lot of people try to be cheap and they'll use like really thin board to make shiplap and they just staple it directly on their drywall. I hit a nail. And it pulls <laughs> off. Okay, so that's probably going to need to come over this way, which is why I use the 18 gauge nailer. Alright, it's almost dry. I'm drying the edge. Because I do have about a quarter inch on each side to adjust for plumb and level and all those things. Oh, that didn't go in. What's going on? We'll just have to fake it till we make it on that one. That's fine. It's no big deal. Where the level's over here. 
Okay, are you almost you almost got it? Almost. I should make sure that the edges were dry. So you can pick it up. So anywhere you see where it's dark, don't stick your hand there. You're probably good. I'm gonna put this gun somewhere safe so it doesn't melt anything. Where's my phone at? Alright, you can look that. Okay, I can grab that and hopefully not get too much black on me. I mean, you're still gonna get black. I'm trying to get black on my face. I've tried to not touch my face, but it doesn't happen. Jane says, mine are popping out because my 1888 house ships winter, spring, and summer. Mine is real ship up, cut special with long nails to stud old homes. Ugh, that's hard. We have the real shiplap, like the pine shiplap in the old part of the house, and we haven't had any pop out. Of course, I can't find my level right this second. Oh, you know where I think it is? I think it's in here. Okay, Odelia says, I need to go to the shop for more boxes. Yeah. Caitlin says, Odelia, are you packing for the big day? Odelia's going to need a trash bag. I love Odelia. She's super sweet, but she's probably next to Harrington and Jack. One of, like, I don't know. She's like her mama. She's not super organized and mean. My new t-shirt. I have all the ship lap. I feel like I can say that now. And it's funny because I've had a few people question my use of ship lap and how much, but the inspector came in the other day and she's seen a few areas that have all the trim up and it's painted and she's like, oh, I like this. I like this a lot more than I thought I would. I'm like, I told you. <laughs> I mean... People have whole houses of sheetrock and nobody says, oh, that's so much sheetrock. Like, it's what your walls are covered in. Okay, so you're going to come you stand in right here. Yes! It fits underneath! You are a genius. Well, I don't know about that. You are also probably black on there. That's though. really, that's really pushing, like, my... I, I have to I have to talk you up because you don't like it. I can doors. kind of do math. All right, you need to have to scoot over. I want to make you excited about putting doors in because you got a lot, and they're all different sizes. Okay, so this door will actually have to go here. Flip it over to this end and show them the wood out. You can't. Okay, I'll flip it. <laughs> Did you get it? This side's not nailed in yet, so careful. I just have one 18 gauge nail in here. I, I, you gotta go over to the door. Can you just kick it with your foot? Yep. I think I got it, maybe. Alright. These are probably the trickiest doors I'll have to do. Oh, watch my thing, my finger. How do I hold this? I'm not gonna use your finger. Okay. After this, you don't have any more double doors. Okay, go ahead and let go, and then kick the bottom into me. The bottom of this door? Yep. But don't don't kick it so much that it falls out the top. Hinge need to come in towards you? No. Okay. What I wanted to know here, kick the other side. I got this black door. Kick the other side over. I'm holding the black door now. You got this other door. <laughs> I'm just making sure that they fit widthwise all the way across. I think they do, but I don't know to tell you. Okay. I'm guessing. Well, okay, there's too many moving parts. There's a lot of moving parts. I gotta get that nailed up in. Alright, we'll get the sanded one. I thought it was gonna be you awkward on camera. I almost said a word. <sighs> Only I, said, you... I said shh. Only because you got nervous. I got my finger. <laughs> Oh, you pinched your finger. How'd you yeah. do that? Don't put your finger where it can get pinched. I didn't know you weren't holding both doors. Okay, I got it. I'm not really sure how I thought you were holding both doors, but... Okay, I gotta get that shimmed in. It okay. will fit. You can let go. Okay. I feel like I need a doctor for or something. Let's start drinking soda. You... So I think that's all we have. Look at my face. Um, because I'm going to have to do, it's going to take me longer than the 10 minutes we have left to do this. So what I'm going to do, I'll walk you through it real quick. I got little shim boards that will go up in the back here. I'll level this out real nice and plumb. 
make sure that I've got enough room in between on the bottom for the two doors and then fasten the top. You don't want to nail the top in too crazy. The sides are what hold this in because if you nail the top in too crazy, what you get is sometimes it'll arch or it'll sag. You just want it to be like right there. You can shim the top too and put a couple little nails in there, but I'm not going to go hog wild nailing that in. We promised him we showed him that furniture that I bought that's in the closet. Oh, the furniture you bought in the closet. Yeah. Okay. Here comes the promises. So, I'll kind of push it where it's going to go. So this still needs a lot of trim, but you get the idea. This is the master bedroom closet. And we ended up doing, I think we showed this before, but we ended up doing a shiplap up top so that we can, because uh, we only have eight foot panels, and it was easier to do that than cut and fit and make all the lines match up. And it's going to be shelving up there anyway. Yeah, and once it's all painted white, it's going to look awesome. We'll trim out the top. Can you put the hutch top on? Now, did, this did not have a decorative piece that came with it up here, right? I was missing that. Um, it's right there. Oh, I thought that was the base that it sits on. That's what they said. Oh, that's the base? Well, I don't know. Okay, well, we'll here, let me show you. I'll, I'll move the camera down. Do you think it's the top? Well, we'll try it out. Actually, it looks like the bottom because it looks like it's too wide for the top. Yeah, so, it's the base. We don't need to show so this. So Jamie case. picked oh, this up. Oh, new channel member, the colored caboose. Welcome. So make sure you're hitting up community. Scroll back, not on an iPad, and you'll find this month's printables. If you haven't made Christmas tags, there's a really cute Christmas tag printable for channel members. Okay. All right, do you need my help or can you bear hug that? Um, yeah, no, these aren't heavy, but can you get the blanket off of this one? The plastic? Yeah. So this I picked up for $100, which for how old it is, is a smoking deal. This is the base. It's hand carved. This is like old school uh, blacksmith handles. It will not get painted. I think um, I had enough over there. Yeah, I know you're shocked that it's not getting painted. But you do need to have some natural wood. And what I will do is I will probably wind up, once it's in place, I might freshen it up with some oil wax, but I'm not painting it. It's got the most amazing... Oh, that video. door. What? It's got some warpage. Well, you know, it's got character. We don't call it warpage. We call I'll it have it. to put a little fastener down there on the bottom. That's fine. All right. Okay. So my plan is that this cabinet is going to be in here for storage. Much cheaper to buy an antique cutch for $100 than it is to buy even MDF to like make a cabinet like this. So MDF. what kind of things are we going to store in here? Um, my purses and my shoes and you know the things that are I have that you don't want to get dirty. Maybe your cosplay helmet that you got made. Yeah. Your Mandalorian helmet. I can put you it on display. This, like, this has wavy glass. Okay, that's upside down. Is it? Yeah. Okay, well. That would it. explain why I thought that it had a trimmed top. I was like, pieces are missing. It's because it's upside down. Okay. Okay. Bring it towards me. Sure, I have. All right, you got it. Yeah. Let's just lift it up that way. Okay. Roll it your way one more time. I do not want this is original wavy glass. It already fell over in the trunk once. Shh. Yeah, that I about lost lost it when I heard their thing. I was like, please don't break the original glass. It has a not old screw here. Alright, let's lift okay. it up. One, two, three. Oh, busted my own chin. <laughs> This fits in there, like so. Okay. So we will. Here, let's pull it against. I feel the like your side's not in. Is it not in? Nope. We will probably secure it to the wall, and then we'll put corbels and a shelf and a hanging rod on each side. Here, let me put this up. So we'll put like shelves on each side here. So that way we've got hanging across. Um, and I figured this would just be a really great way to store what we need to store in here. I mean, I think traditionally people think of building out an entire closet, but I got this idea because one of my customers was gonna buy a dresser to put in their closet and then put shelves and hanging on each side. And I was like, that's genius. And we have a lot of space in here, so. 
So you need to do we're going to do shelves all here. Um, We've well, actually not really discussed the layout of the closet. <laughs> well, do we want to do shelves or do we want to do like a shelf with hanging, like long hanging? Um, maybe over here or we could center it, I don't know, we'll figure it out. But anyways, at least we've got somewhere to put some stuff. I don't think it has the shelves cut for in here, so you're going to have to... These are the doors that go in here. Let me flip it up so you can see. So this is the bathroom door, and that is for the closet, that one there. Oh, there's the shelves in the bottom. So... We have, these are matching. This door has a ton of locks on it, which will probably get removed and bondoed and filled in when we paint it. Yeah, one's taller than the other. And I don't remember which one. I think the smaller one is framed in here, if I remember correctly. Yes. The bigger the, one is in the bathroom. The bigger one's for the bathroom, the smaller one's for the closet. Originally, I was going to do these as doors to the bedroom, but they're not the same height, so I had to... <laughs> She was really heartbroken when she's like, oh, they cut down the top weird. Oh, they cut down the bottom different, and they just, they don't match up. Even though they're the same door, they were in different parts of the house, and they've been cut. They've been amended. Do you want to start showing their nightstand? Sure. It's pretty. Now, the nightstand I feel not like I can handle the other one better than this one. Oh, is this one more burly? So maybe this will be my nightstand, and you can get the other one. I don't love the hardware on it. I'm not even sure it's original, so maybe it is. It will come this close. is probably, judging by construction, more like 1940s. But it does have some beautiful molded detail. If I keep the hardware, it's going to be um, painted black, because I like black. And it'll be painted to match the other nightstand we did last week. So this detail here oh, is similar is to what this has going on here. Not identical, but still cool. Well, the other dresser has a lot of carving too. Um, and this one has a little damage here. We'll probably keep a natural wood top, paint the base to match the other one. I love it because it has shallow drawers. So if, when you need like stuff in your nightstand, but you don't want it like super deep, you can put like a single layer of cookies or you know whatever you put in your nightstand. And it'll fit just perfect under our high window over here. We got this window here and then the other nightstand's already in place. That's the kid's buffet. This is the sink buffet that goes in the kids' bathroom. We're really hoping to get that bathroom more put together today so that we can work today it. Today or tomorrow. I gotta finish the ceilings. Yep. Well, I'm gonna put it in there. What happened to my phone? Alright, I got the tripod over Can I here. Oh, Alright guys. Thanks for joining Waste Not Wednesday. Um, you can hit up JanuaryVintage.com for the little black dress you saw us use today and the two inch angled paintbrush. Um, JRVHome.com for home decor and clothing. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to January Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. It's not ending. <laughs>